Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this week we're going to be learning about the OpenGL coordinate system and learning about a more efficient way to render models. But before we get started on that there's one little thing from last week that I need to correct. If you go into your renderer class you need to add one more line in the prepare me method. I managed to forget it last time so let's add it in now and this just clears the color from the previous frame so go ahead and run that to check that it's working and there you go so last time we rendered a quad but I didn't explain how to get these vertices here so let's delete them and I'll talk you through how I got them now so first we need to look at the OpenGL coordinate system and you can see it here there's the X and Y axis with the origin in the center of the screen one y at the top edge and minus one y at the bottom and one x on the right edge and one minus one x on the left edge of the screen and finally because we're working in 3d the z-axis is pointing out of the screen towards you it's quite hard to draw it here but just imagine it coming straight out of the screen so here's the quad that we want to draw hopefully you can see why the vertices have the coordinates that they do so what order do we have to give these coordinates to OpenGL? If you remember from last time, everything we draw has to be in triangles. So we need to tell OpenGL about these two triangles here. And OpenGL always needs us to specify these vertices in a counterclockwise order. So let's start with the top left triangle here and we'll start with vertex V0. No particular reason for choosing V0 first. I could have chosen any vertex, uh, it makes no difference. But now I must go counterclockwise around the triangle to specify the other vertices. So the next one is V1 and then finally V3. And that's the top left triangle. So now for the other triangle, we'll start at V3 and go counterclockwise to V1 and finally V2. And so that's it. Both triangles are now represented in this list of vertices. And it's this list that we can load up and render in our game. So let's put those vertices in here now and run the game and there you go the quad is rendering just like it should but there is one slight problem with this method of rendering if we have another look at how we specified the vertices we had v0 v1 and v3 for the first triangle and then v3 v1 and v2 for the second triangle and as you can see here the data for v3 is specified twice as is the data for v1 we're sending OpenGL data for six vertices when actually there are only four different vertices in the quad. There must be a more efficient way of doing this. Ideally what we want to do is just send OpenGL a list of the four different vertices in the model. But then OpenGL would have no way of knowing how to connect them up. So we can tell OpenGL how to connect them. We use another VBO, another set of data called an index buffer, to help define the model. And this data tells OpenGL the order in which it should connect the vertices in order to make triangles that can be rendered. So let's create the index buffer for our rectangle here. We still need to define the two triangles in the exact same way as before. So we'll start at V0, which is the zeroth vertex, vertex. So we'll represent it with a zero in the index buffer. Now we go counterclockwise like before to V1, which is in position 1 in our list of vertices, so we put a 1 in our index buffer. And to finish off the triangle, the first triangle, we connect that to V3, which is in position 3 in the list, so we put a 3 in the index VBO. And now the same for the second triangle. Start at V3, which is in position 3, go counterclockwise to V1, which is in position 1, and finally V2 in position 2. So now we have a different way of representing the quad. We represent it this time using four vertices instead of six, but we also now need an extra set of data, the index buffer, which contains six ints. So you might be wondering, is it really worth all the hassle? Well, let's have a look. Each vertex is three floats, an X, Y, and a Z position. The first method used six vertices to represent the quad, so that's a total of 18 floats. The second method needs only four vertices to represent the model, that's 12 floats, but it did also need the help of six ints. So, in total, it all seems pretty pointless. The two methods appear to use the same amount of data to represent the quad. But our quad is very simple. Each vertex is only described by a three float position, and this in real life is pretty unrealistic. 
when we get on to doing lighting, each vertex is definitely going to need a normal vector associated with it, which is another three floats, and each vertex will also need a UV texture coordinate if we want to texture our models, which of course we will, so that's another two floats as well. So in total, each vertex will have at least eight floats of data associated with it, and in more complex rendering systems, it could have even more. So let's do the maths again, knowing now that each vertex needs eight floats of data. So to render our quad using the first method, we would now need 48 floats, whereas in the second method, we'd only need 32 floats and of course the six ints. So now you can start to see a difference between the two methods. In terms of bytes, assuming that a float and an int are both four bytes each, the first method represents a quad as 192 bytes, while the second method can represent it as only 152 bytes. That's 20% less data to represent the exact same quad. And this is just for a simple quad, where only two of the vertices were shared between triangles. In bigger, more complex models that we'll be using for our game, vertices could be shared between three, four, five or more triangles. So the amount of duplicate data that you would send using the first method would be crazy. In practice, the second method will usually be able to represent a model in like 30, 40 or maybe even 50% less data. So, long story short, we're going to be using the second method. So let's now go ahead and implement all of that into the code. So we'll start off in the loader class and we're going to add a method here that's going to load up that indices buffer that I've been talking about and bind it to a VAO that we want to render. So this method will take in the, the array of the indices that we want to load up into the indices VBO and it starts off just like any other VBO, we need to create an empty VBO by calling GL gen buffers and that's going to return the ID of the empty VBO and we're going to add that to the list of VBOs that we made last time so that it gets deleted when we close the game. Now we need to go ahead and bind the buffer because we want to use it. So GL bind buffer that will bind the VBO. Now we need to specify the type of VBO and this is different from last time because this isn't data this is an element array buffer and that tells OpenGL to use it as the indices buffer and then we put the ID of the VBO that we want to bind. Now we want to store our indices into this VBO and just like other data had to be stored into a float buffer first, the indices have to be stored into an int buffer. So let's create a quick method here to convert our int array of indices into an int buffer that we can store into the VBO. So this is pretty similar to the float buffer met method First we'll create an empty int buffer by calling buffer buffer, and that needs to know the size of the data. Then we just put our data into that int buffer and like last time we have to flip the buffer so that it's ready to be read from. And finally we just go ahead and return that int buffer and now we can go back into here and we can use that method to convert our array of indices uh, int array into an int buffer and then we'll be able to store that int buffer into the VBO. So let's go ahead and store it into the VBO now and we can do that same as last time by calling GL buffer data. Again this needs to know first the type of VBO that we're using which as I said is is not just an array buffer, it is an element array buffer so that OpenGL knows how to use it. Put the data in there and then finally, like last time, it needs to know how it's going to be used, how the data is going to be used and it's just going to be used to draw static. We're never going to edit the data so OpenGL knows that it doesn't have to worry about the data ever being changed. So one final thing that we need to do because that's, that's all for that method that will bind the indices VBO to the VAO that we've just created in this method here. Uh, so we need to take in the indices VBO and just after we've created the VAO we're going to, to bind the indices buffer to it by calling that method that we just created bind indices buffer and finally the raw model needed to know the number of vertices and that's now going to be the length of the indices buffer which will still be six in the case of the quad. So let's go to the renderer. There's 
one change we have to make here. We're going to use a different method to render now, now that we're using the indices VBO to do the rendering. And this method is called glDrawElements. And first of all, it needs to know the mode. What is it rendering? Just like last time, it's rendering GL triangles. Then it needs to know the number of vertices to render, which is in the model. Then it needs to know the type of data that we're giving it. And this time, because we're giving it the indices buffer, that contains ints. So GL unsigned int. And then finally, it needs to know the offset, where in the data should it start. We want it to start right at the beginning, render everything, so we put a zero there. So the final thing that we need to do to get all of this to work is to actually specify the model data that we want to load up and render. As you know, we now need two sets of data to represent our quad. Firstly, we need a list of the data of the four vertices in the quad, which is just the four positions of the vertices. And then we need the list of ints that will tell OpenGL the order in which these vertices need to be connected. So put this data into your main class like this and make sure that your load to VAO method now takes in both the vertex data and the index buffer data as well. And then you can go ahead and run the game. And there you go. We still have a quad, but this time using a more efficient rendering method. And although this won't seem very important now, it will prove to be extremely important later on and it will help our game to render that little bit faster, as well as ensuring that models don't take up too much space in memory. So that is it for this tutorial. Next time we're going to be adding some colour to our rectangle as we learn all about shaders in OpenGL, and that video will be out next Saturday. You can also check out yesterday's devlog video, the link is on the screen now. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.